Welcome everyone. We're just about to begin. Okay, I see that our participants are joining. So I think we'll get started. Hello, welcome everyone. My name is Allison Portnow Lathrop and I'm the head of public programs at the Ackland Art Museum. Thank you for joining us today for our artist conversation with Nelson Morales. I'd like to go over a few technical aspects of this virtual program before we get started. First, all of our audience members will have their audio and video off throughout the talk, so don't worry about that. That being said, we welcome your interaction throughout the talk with uh, the chat function that you'll see the single speech bubble at the bottom of your screen where you can share thoughts with our panelists. And we also welcome you to use the Q&A box, the two bubbles at the bottom at the screen that says Q&A, where you can ask questions that you want to be answered live by our panelists during the final portion of our program. Today, we have two additional functionalities that I want to make you aware of. We're offering live English closed captioning, and you can turn this on or off by using the closed caption button at the bottom of your screen. We're also offering simultaneous Spanish-English interpretation. If you click the globe-shaped interpretation button and then select either Spanish or English audio for the talk, that will be enabled. If you don't turn on the interpretation function, you'll hear the presentation in both Spanish and English as our um, different panelists speak in both languages. I'll give you a few seconds to figure out those settings um, you might have to press the more button with the three dots to find some of those functions. Um, and feel free to use the chat um, that we will see behind the scenes and we can help you troubleshoot if needed. So I'd like to begin now um, by introducing our three panelists. Nelson Morales' dynamic work um, focuses primarily on sexual diversity and identity most notably in his recent images of the vibrant Mushes community in the artist's native Oaxaca, Mexico. Morales has been featured in numerous solo and group exhibitions in Mexico, the United States, and around the globe. His work has been published in several magazines and was included in the groundbreaking group exhibition, Trans-American Gender Identity Appearance Today at the McNay Art Museum in San Antonio, Texas in 2019. Six photographs from Nelson's series, Musa's Mouche, are on, currently on loan to the Ackland, thanks to the generosity of Alan Blevins. Alan Blevins, who we have here today, is a wealth strategy executive for Bank of America. He serves on the McCall Center for Art and Innovation Board of Directors and the Mint Museum Contemporary Collection Board. Alan is a collector of contemporary photography and the lender to the Ackland. And leading our conversation today, we have Lauren Turner, the Ackland's assistant curator for the collection. Lauren helps oversee our permanent collection of over 19,000 works, in addition to working on our special exhibitions and contemporary site-specific installations in our art and gallery. So at this point, I'd like to hand things off to Lauren to begin our conversation with Nelson and Alan, and remind you to join in throughout by sharing your thoughts in the chat boxes and the Q&A boxes. Thank you very much, Allison. We really appreciate that introduction. And I want to echo what Allison said and heartily thank Nelson and Alan for joining us today. Um, we really appreciate that you're taking time out of your lives to talk about the importance of Nelson's work. Um, before we get too much into the conversation, I do want to thank a few other people. Um, I think we need to give an additional thanks to both Alan and to Monica King of Monica King Contemporary for making the introduction between Nelson and the Ackland Art Museum. We really appreciate it. It's made for very fruitful endeavors. 
And I also want to thank our partners who have cross-promoted this talk. It's been a very, very busy time in Chapel Hill, despite the pandemic. Um, and it takes a village to have a public program. So I wanted to make sure to encourage everyone to please look to the robust rosters of programming for the three following festivals. UNC's LGBTQ Center is beginning their first ever queer mini-con today, which is part of their National Coming Out Day, parentheses, but make it a week, being held from this past Tuesday, October 6th, to October 16th. Latinx Heritage Month, which is hosted by UNC's Carolina Latinx Center, began on September 15th and runs through October 15th. And they also still have a lot of active ongoing programming occurring. Additionally, the Click Photography Festival runs throughout the Triangle during the whole month of October. And they also have a whole range of activities that I encourage everyone to take a look at. The photograph that you'd been looking at while we were waiting for the talk to begin is Queen on Board, and it's by Nelson Morales, and part of his Musas Mushe series, as Allison described, and the first in a series of close looks that we're doing here at the Ackland. Close Looks is an opportunity to join members of the Ackland staff and our communities in investigating individual works of art through a variety of voices, perspectives, approaches, and resources. We figure there's no better place to start in exploring a work of art than with the voices of its artist and his avid supporters, so a conversation with Nelson and Alan seemed a natural kickoff. We do intend to upload this Zoom recording to the Close Looks page for Nelson's work so that it'll be a future resource for future users. And please do keep checking our website in the coming months as during this academic year, Close Looks will be focusing on several works of art that engage with the construction and reception of racial and LGBTQ identities. So all of that having been said, let's get to the truly exciting content and let's I'll start off by asking Nelson. Nelson, could you please give us sort of um, a general and brief introduction to your career in the Musas Mushe series to paint the picture for us of some of what we'll be discussing? And as Nelson is talking, we'll be showing some of the photographs that Alan has kindly lent to the Ackland for um, our use in display, exhibition, and interpretation. Nelson? Okay, may I answer in Spanish? It's okay. Um, hola a todos, uh, yo soy Nelson Morales. Soy originario de un pueblo que se llama Unión Hidalgo, Oaxaca, en el Istmo de Tehuantepec. Y estoy muy contento de estar aquí con todos ustedes. Realmente esto es muy emocionante para mí. Me, me da gusto estar aquí con todos ustedes y les voy a hablar un poco de mi trayectoria como fotógrafo. Hace 10 años yo empecé a fotografiar a la comunidad Mushe por una, um, por una, um, una cuestión personal que tenía sobre mi propia identidad. Es decir, yo me rechazaba como Mushe a, ver, a pesar de haber nacido aquí en mi pueblo y ser de esta comunidad. Sin embargo, durante mi adolescencia tuve muchos problemas con mi identidad muchos problemas de aceptación, muchas inseguridades, eh, por lo cual me, me llevó a, a acercarme a las muchas, acercarme a ellas, conocer un poco más de su vida, hacerme amigo de ellas. Y dentro de todo ese proceso y de todos esos años nos hicimos cómplices. Yo he sido el cómplice de ellas en este viaje de varios años. He entrado a sus sueños, sus fantasías, sus ilusiones, y en lo más profundo de sus corazones. Para mí, haber retratado a las muchas ha sido un proyecto que me ha abierto las puertas al mundo y sobre todo ha hecho que me acepte como tal, como parte de esta comunidad indígena y también como parte de la comunidad. Durante todos estos años eh, las he fotografiado de distintas maneras, eh, pero sobre todo lo más importante es que que se ve la, la manera de aproximarme muy a fondo, muy adentro, y eso es lo que mi trabajo eh, hace 
lo hace excepcional y lo hace importante. Nelson, for some background for those of us who have not encountered discussions of the Muche community before, um, they're identified as a sort of third gender within uh, Oaxaca, Mexico. And I didn't know if you wanted to sort of give us a little more background on what it is to be a Musha. Okay. Um, qué bueno que lo mencionas, Lauren. <laughs> Primero mencionar, eh, las Mushas se les considera como el tercer género en América Latina o en México. Es decir, las Mushas existen desde tiempos ancestrales. No sabemos cuándo ni, ni cuándo. Eh, sin embargo, ellas... Eh, eh, son, eh, son un, un grupo, si le puedes decir de otra manera, queer o trans, pero más allá de lo queer y lo trans, eh, traspasa esas barreras, porque ser mucho es algo más cultural, algo de esta cultura zapoteca, que, en donde ellas son de alguna manera muy aceptadas por sus familias y, y, y se consideran como la como una mezcla entre los dos géneros. Aquí no hay nada eh, científico, podemos decirlo así. Simplemente es un fenómeno cultural que existe en este lugar. A veces es difícil entender realmente eh, que existe un tercer género, porque para la ciencia no lo existe, pero para nosotros sí. Para nosotros así lo, lo, lo hacemos y lo realizamos aquí en, en esta región de Oaxaca. Y... Y lo importante de las muchas es que pueden ser libres desde que pueden ser libres de expresarse en la forma que ellas quieran desde pequeñas, porque las mamás lo, las apoyan, las mamás eh, eh, tienen un carácter muy fuerte, son mujeres empoderadas y ellas son las que las que eh, proveen a las muchas de, por ejemplo, de la ropa de mujer. Eh, los defienden en contra del machismo de los hombres y son, se sienten muy orgullosas de, de sus hijas mushes. En mi caso, eh, yo también soy mushe, porque yo nací acá y, y también soy homosexual. Sin embargo, yo eh, soy un mushe, podemos decir que cisgénero, porque acepto mi, mi, mi cuerpo como tal, no quiero cambiarlo, no 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 siento la necesidad de vestirme de mujer o de ser mujer. Sin embargo, eh, por ser parte de esta comunidad, por haber nacido aquí y por formar parte de la comunidad mucho, pues así lo, durante este trayecto fotográfico, es lo que he aprendido a reconocer. Thank you so much for that overview, Nelson. I think it'll really help us as we move forward and talk more in depth about the photos. And it's always really meaningful to hear such a personal perspective. I um, want to turn to the image Queen on board, which is the image that we sort of put some hyper focus on in terms of our efforts. And I've done a lot of reading of interviews with you in the past, and I know that generally you like your photographs to have a bit of an air of mystery about them. But we on staff and others have been spending a lot of time looking at this photo, and I didn't know if there were any tidbits you could share with us. For instance, we know that there's um, a sign potentially for a butcher shop on the bus, and we didn't know if you could tell us about whose car it is, how you may know the Musha, where this was taken, any sort of added behind the scenes insights that you might be willing to share, we'd really love to hear. Okay, la historia es muy interesante. <laughs> en realidad se van a sorprender. Porque esta Musha es de mi pueblo. Es, de hecho, vive cerca de mi casa. Y... y durante mucho tiempo la estuve eh, conociendo, estuve saliendo con ella, estuve asistiendo a sus fiestas. Eh, eh, compartimos muchas cosas. Y en algún momento ella fue reina de la fiesta Musha aquí en mi pueblo. Y ese es su vestido. Entonces, cuando yo voy a la fiesta, veo ese vestido y después eh, le digo a ella, quiero hacerte una sesión de fotos con tu vestido de reina. 
Entonces, una semana después, ya después que pasaba la fiesta, ya después que no estábamos borrachos, estábamos más tranquilos, eh, nos fuimos eh, afuera del pueblo. Pero para esto, eh, aquí en, en, en Oaxaca existen muchos ese tipo, esos tipos de motos. Eh, le llamamos mototaxis. Mototaxis. Es. Y ahorita enfrente de mí pasan como 20 en un, en un minuto. <ríe> Entonces, eh, el, el primer al primer mototaxi que pasaba en la calle le hice la parada, stop, y le dije, llévame fuera del pueblo donde haya mucho aire porque quiero hacer una sesión de fotos. Y entonces me dice, te voy a cobrar muy caro. Le digo, no importa, llévame, llévanos. Y una, una amiga de México vino a visitarme y fue mi asistente. Ella no sabía nada, no sabía nada que íbamos a hacer. Ella solo quería salir afuera del pueblo y ver naturaleza. Entonces nos fuimos a 20 minutos fuera del pueblo eh, y, y primero, la primera sesión de fotos fue entre las vacas. Entonces, eh, se dice que las vacas eh, reaccionan a los colores fuertes, ¿no? Y, y atacan a los colores fuertes. Y sí nos atacaron las vacas. Entonces corrimos, salimos del rancho y fuimos a un lugar más seguro. Y pues ahí empezó el, el verdadero shooting. Entonces, me gusta mucho que, que algunas fotografías tengan movimiento, tengan, eh, eh, como, como ustedes ven, el, el, el vestido se mueve. No solo por, por el movimiento de la moto, sino también por el aire. Y pues esa foto la repetí como 20 veces. El chofer del, del mototaxi estaba muy enojado, pero estaba... Eh, como muy curioso por, porque pues era la primera vez que él participaba en, en, en una sesión de fotos de este tipo. Y fue muy... Pero cuando yo veo el resultado y veo esa foto, eh, sentí que algo iba a pasar con esa foto. Que yo, yo no sabía si iba a ser muy conocido, si iba a viajar mucho, si iba a ser expuesto en otros lados pero sentí como una adrenalina por todo el cuerpo cuando vi esa foto y, y dije, algo va a pasar y, y, y le pagué doble al, al, al chico de la moto. It was por, worth por, it, I think, definitely. While we have this image on screen, Alan, I do want to get you involved. So I was hoping maybe you could use this image as a jumping off point to say, what you see in it and just sort of more broadly how you first encountered Nelson and his work and um, what draws you to his his practice in general. Yeah, uh, thanks Lauren uh, and uh, it's a pleasure to join everyone today. Uh, yeah, let me uh, first uh, talk about uh, my introduction to Nelson. Uh, it was at uh, Foto España in Madrid in uh, 2015. Uh, uh, the theme of the festival that year was Mexico. And for those of you not familiar with it, Foto España is uh, one of the world's largest uh, photography festivals. Uh, and uh, Bank of America uh, at the time uh, was presenting an exhibition at the festival Uh, titled Manuel Carrillo, Mi Quiero de Mexico, My Beloved Mexico. Uh, but it was, it was, when it was at the festival, I saw two exceptional exhibitions. Uh, Kinder Woods by Ana Casas Broda and Divalari Detenar. Uh, it was Divalari Detenar that had uh, Nelson's photographs. Uh, I was extremely taken by both exhibitions, so much so that uh, I mentioned it to one of the festival's organizers uh, and asked if anyone that uh, was associated with those exhibitions, uh, if Anna or anyone was there at the festival. And it just so happened that evening uh, when I was talking to the organizer, uh, she said, yeah, I, would, I, I can introduce you now. And uh, uh, I was able to uh, meet Nelson, Anna, and some of the other artists uh, from Mexico. Uh, so it was a great experience. 
this particular piece, Quino Board, was part of that exhibition. Uh, and for me, uh, you know, I think art, particularly the visual arts, has a beautiful, innate ability to tell a story. Uh, there's an intimacy between the artwork and the viewer that's very unique. Uh, I, you know, multiple people can look at the same piece of art and have a totally different interactions. And I, I love that. And I think it's amazing. Uh, this particular piece, Queen on Board, uh, you know, the first thing that captured my attention was the vibrant colors and the movement. Uh, but there was more, you know, I wanted to, uh, I wanted to know about the work. I, I asked, I wanted to talk to Nelson uh, about the things he's talking about now. Uh, you know, I wanted to know why uh, she was in a flowing red gown. Uh, you know, I looked, I wanted to know why she was getting out of a mini cab in an isolated, desolate environment. So I had all these stories in my mind before I ever heard it, Nelson. And, you know, and Nelson, like a lot of artists, they, you know, they encourage and they want you to have your own visualization, your own relationship with the art. Uh, but that was when I first talked to Nelson about something I'm sure he's going to talk about later is his desire to let the Muches create fantasies. And, uh, you know, it's, it's not always an easy life being a Muche. It's accepted in the community, but it's still not always easy. Nelson lets them create these fantasies and it becomes a part of the fantasies. And that's all part of the storytelling that attracts me to Nelson's work. Thank you so much, Alan. I know when I take off sort of my curatorial hat and I'm just responding to that work purely on a personal basis, I'm just filled with envy because I could never have that degree of confidence and poise exiting a mini bus in full <laughs> portable garb. It's just, <laughs> I would trip and be on my face. So I'm, I, I, I really love that it offers a little bit of something to everyone based on their personal experiences. Um, I wanted to sort of highlight that because you two have had this long running dynamic as artist and collector, you've actually been able to impact and influence each other's cultural spheres quite a bit. Um, Alan, you're joining us from Charlotte, I believe, and Nelson, you're currently in Mexico. Um, but Nelson spent four months in Charlotte as part of an artist residency at the McCall Center uh, of Art and in for Art and Innovation. And Nelson, I was wondering, from that time in your residency, what were some of your feelings about life in North Carolina and what was similar and different from your experiences in Oaxaca? Um, bueno, eh, fue, mi, fue mi segundo viaje a Estados Unidos. Eh, primero, fui a, primero fui a Alabama por unas semanas, después fui a, a, a Charlotte a cumplir mi, a, mi sueño americano. <laughs> Y fue, eh, no sé, es, son muchas cosas que tengo que decir sobre, sobre esa experiencia. Eh, obviamente, eh, la comida, la cultura, pues, eh, era totalmente diferente. Eh, compartir con otros artistas americanos eh, sobre, sobre mi arte, sobre mis procesos artísticos. Y fue un, una experiencia eh, nueva para mí, pero fue desafiante, fue, fue muy desafiante y, y creo que lo hice bien. Creo que durante mi residencia eh, pude mostrar mi trabajo en, en McCall Center a las personas que me visitaban. Las personas estaban muy interesadas en conocer sobre la cultura Mushe. Eh, hablé, hice una, eh, hablé, hice una charla en Creative Mornings. Fue todo un éxito. Eh, 
cuando esa charla se, se publicó, se agotó, se agotaron, se, agot, se agotaron las entradas en pocos días y, y también eh, realicé trabajos fotográficos en Charlotte eh, con la comunidad latina, en la comunidad latina LGBTQ+, estuve trabajando y también eh, hice un proyecto eh, con una mujer transgénero que es Marsha Tigar, ella vive en Matthews y es un proyecto muy fuerte, muy potente, que habla de la transexualidad, cómo hacer el cambio de género en la tercera edad. Y es una historia muy conmovedora que, que llegó a lo más profundo de mi corazón y es una de las cosas más que agradezco más a, 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 la, a la gente de McCall Center, a Allen, por supuesto, y, y sobre todo que conocí a, a, a gente que, que, me, que me brindó su apoyo, me, me brindó su cariño. Recuerdo que caminaba en las calles y, y la gente me hablaba. Tú eres Nelson. Y yo relacionaba muy zapatos. Sí, soy yo. Ah, te vi. Te vi hablando y, y me inspiraste mucho. Y recuerdo también que algunas chicas se acercaban a mí llorando porque eran como de, de una... Los, inspira, los inspiré para, para ellos poder expresar su sexualidad, su género. Y, y yo creo que con, con eso es muy importante para, para mí, a verlas, da, darles esa fuerza para que ellas pudieran inspirarse y expresarse. Thank you. And Ellen, on the flip side of that coin, have you been able to have the privilege to visit Oaxaca and experience the Miche community firsthand? Uh, well, uh, yes. Uh, my, my husband, Armando, is from Mexico. We travel there uh, frequently. Uh, now, while I have not been to visit uh, Yucatan, uh, Uh, the, uh, we have been to Oaxaca, uh, but Nelson's also invi invited me to uh, some traditional Oaxacan wellas, uh, which are huge celebrations uh, in Mexico City with the Oaxacan community there, uh, including uh, a muche vuela. Uh, which was a uh, was a great treat. Uh, so I've had opportunity to meet a, a number of people. Uh, you know, I, I think you know the the work that Nelson's doing is uh, you know particularly relevant today. Uh, you know, I, often you know I have conversations with people and they mistakenly think that uh, trans identity is something new. Uh, well, it's not. Uh, you know, there's, as Nelson talked about in, in his community in southern Oaxaca, you know, there are isolated communities around the world uh, where there are third genders uh, or trans, trans uh, gender communities. Uh, and they've been part of those uh, societies for, for generations back to ancient times. Uh, and, uh, you know, I would encourage anyone who's interested in learning more about this. Uh, the National Geographic uh, did a excellent uh, issue in, I think it's 2017, on uh, gender. Uh, and, uh, you know, I'd encourage, and they profile a lot of those uh, ancient uh, communities that are, you know, That, that, you know, I, I reference isolated, they're isolated and, and that's been able to keep those communities alive. Uh, and, you know, again, they go back, uh, go back decades. That's great. Thank you for those perspectives. And I'm, I, I would love to see the Miche Club. It sounds like a lot of fun. Um, Definitely one of the things. <laughs> One of the things that I'd like us to turn to is sort of just the broader field of photography. Um, both of you are very involved in terms of following trends of contemporary photographer, both as a practitioner and as a collector. And in honor of the Click Photography Festival, I was wondering if you would both be willing to talk about some of the photographers that you look to for inspiration 
inspiration or collect? And what is it about the works of those photographers that you find relatable? Uh, but I, I'll uh, start and then I'll turn that over to uh, Nelson. Uh, for us, there's a thread in what we collect and it's, uh, it's about storytelling and it's uh, woven from predominantly in Mexico. Uh, you know, we've, one of the first uh, purchases, photography pur purchases we made was Paul Strand's Mexico portfolio, which was originally shot in 1932 uh, and uh, republished in 1967. Uh, there was a young photographer who joined Strand during his shoot was Manuel Alvarez Bravo. And two of his assistants were Graciela Itubide and Ana Casas Broda. Uh, I mentioned all three of them because they're the three, they're, they're among the three most important photographers in, uh, in Mexico uh, and have influenced uh, generations. Uh, as photographs are intensely layered. Uh, they, they tell such beautiful st stories. Uh, and, you know, as I mentioned, they, they've, they've influenced a generation of photographers, including Nelson, who studied under Anna. Uh, and, you know, through my having the great, you know, honor of, of getting to know both Graciela and Anna, uh, they, they've introduced me in turn to uh, so many incredible photographers. Uh, some of the ones that I'm particularly uh, excited about uh, now in Mexico is like Maya Godad, uh, who just won uh, the National Geographic uh, Award this year. Uh, Oswaldo Ruiz, Carita Juarez, Luis Arturo, uh, compared to a few, uh, uh, but I, you know, I would say, while not intentional, uh, you know, I, you know, a lot, a lot of the artists that we also collect that are not from Mexico tend to have a connection, uh, and they also have strong messages in their work, which is really what what is imp most important to me. And those are like uh, Luis Gonzalez Palma, uh, Judith Hernandez, whose works are behind me, and uh, Pinky Bass, Carolyn Demerit. Again, they're all, they're not Mexican, but they, you know, they share uh, some of the same traits that those artists, Mexican artists that, uh, that draw, my, draw my attention. And Nelson, who are some of your influences and favorite photographers? Bueno, yo tengo, eh, durante mi carrera como fotógrafo, eh, he tomado muchos cursos y programas de fotografía contemporánea en México, pero no solo con maestros mexicanos, sino también con maestros de todo el mundo. Y... Eh, eh, Yo creo que cuando uno eh, toma en serio esta carrera, eh, trata de aprender todo lo que tú puedas, todo lo que, lo que necesitas para, para tener las herramientas necesarias para, para realizar un, 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 trabajo, un trabajo fuerte a nivel fotográfico. Y bueno, obviamente Ana Casas Broda es una de mis mentoras. Me gusta mucho Graciela Iturbide porque yo me inspiré en ella. En sobre porque ella también fotografió a las muchas en los 60s, en los años 60s y e ellas son muy importantes para mí y me gusta mucho también eh, un fotógrafo eh, francés que se llama Antoine de Agat, que es un eh, fotógrafo de Magnum y me gusta Vivian Sassen, me gusta Roger Ballen, yo siempre trato de, de estar al día con los fotógrafos a nivel mundial Y, y también, ¿por qué no inspirarme un poco en ellos para, de alguna manera, yo eh, eh, también refrescarme y, y, y continuar haciendo buen, buenas imágenes? 
Buenas historias. Thank you. Um, I know that I've also seen quite a bit, and I think it's also apparent in our conversation that your work is really intensely engaged with the gender identity of your subjects. In doing your work, has it influenced your own gender identity? And if so, how? Um, obviamente, sí, obviamente. Um, puede uh, I, don't know, I, I, I don't have the translation, but ask me the question, please. Ask me again the question. I didn't listen, John. Um, yeah. Sure. Um, when you've been working with the Mushes, has it influenced okay. how you perceive your own gender identity? Has that Changed okay. at all. Sí, sí, sí. Ok, sí. Um, como comenté en un principio, era complicado para mí por un, una cuestión de no aceptarme como parte de la cultura mushe. Sin embargo, gracias a la fotografía, gracias a adentrarme en estas historias, a conocer um, distintas culturas de diversidad sexual, um, obviamente me he vuelto... Um, como más abierto y más eh, he aceptado más mi, mi identidad y ahora lo puedo decir sin ningún problema y no tengo ningún conflicto. Creo que cuando uno eh, realiza este tipo de trabajos que son también un poco intro, introspectivos y abordas eh, muchas cuestiones sobre ti mismo, sobre quién eres, sobre dónde vas, sobre tus orígenes, Y, y también en la cuestión de mi identidad como, como un hombre uh, homosexual, un hombre mucho zapoteca, también en esos, en esos aspectos eh, me he adentrado porque también tenía un, un rechazo por, por ser uh, de una comunidad como indígena, como por mi color de piel, por mi condición económica. Eh, porque pues, veía mucha televisión y yo quería ser como, como esas personas que veían la televisión. Y a, por medio de la fotografía he aceptado mi identidad, he aceptado mis orígenes y, y, y soy muy orgulloso de ellas actualmente y es algo que yo presumo que algo que... Puedo decir que, que mi identidad... Eh, mi identidad eh, indígena, mi identidad queer, mi identidad mushe, eh, mi identidad eh, como física, son mi bandera ahora. Um, Alan and Nelson, you both mentioned through the course of this talk that there are definite challenges in the Mushe's lives in Oaxaca. And I didn't know if you wanted to elaborate on what some of those are and if you feel that art has a power to change any of those challenges for the better? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll let uh, Nelson uh, get more specific in that. Uh, but, uh, you know, one of the things that, uh, I, you know, it's, it's a testament to Nelson's work, uh, but, uh, you know, he's his his work has helped share the story of the Muche community. I mean, uh, the New York Times, uh, I think it, uh, 2018, both the New York Times did a a story on uh, Nelson's work and uh, the Muche culture, uh, but uh, also uh, Vogue Italia did a uh, a major spread uh of his after, work you know and they were looking at it they they were looking at it from a from a uh, uh from a from a uh, a fashion beauty perspective uh which is like, like i said his photographs are also stunningly beautiful in addition to telling such a strong story uh and then aperture uh, did, uh, you know, featured uh, Nelson in their uh, Mexico uh, uh, edition. 
Uh, and I think all those things are important because it helps tell the story of, uh, of, of what is, uh, you know, it's another story talking about gender and identity, uh, but it, it highlights that particularly, you know, particularly the Muche culture. And Nelson, maybe you can uh, talk a little bit about, you know, while it's still, you know, it's accepted part of the community, there's still, uh, still challenges. Bueno, yo, eh, con, obviamente mi, mi trabajo ha hecho un largo viaje y lo continuará haciendo durante varios años más. Estoy seguro que así será. Y eso ayudará a, a mostrar esas historias a otras culturas, a otros países, a otros eh, medios de comunicación y que eso pueda inspirar a, a muchas otras personas. Um, considero que hay muchos desafíos actuales para la comunidad LGBTQ+, um, pero a veces también um, hay muchos movimientos um, en contra, muchos movimientos homofóbicos que están renaciendo nuevamente y, y, y se me hace muy complicado, muy complicado el futuro. Realmente veo cierto retroceso en en distintas culturas, en distintos países. Por tal motivo, creo que tenemos que defender quién somos, eh, tratar de expresarnos, buscar los medios para difundir nuestro trabajo, para expresar nuestra identidad, nuestra libertad. Y eso es algo con lo que me he enfrentado, porque también me he enfrentado en mi trabajo a la censura. Eh, en cuan, cuanto yo empecé a tomar fotografías y a empecé a mostrarlos, obviamente muchos... Eh, muchas revistas y muchas exhibiciones eh, no querían mostrar mi trabajo por, un, por, por tabús, por muchas cuestiones. Sin embargo, con el tiempo he aprendido a, a defender mi trabajo, a estar seguro de quién soy, a estar seguro de lo que estoy haciendo y a confiar en lo que hago. Creo que de esa, por, esa, por eso me preparé, por eso estudié. Eh, y por eso me he vuelto un poco más seguro. Y también para defender el trabajo. Creo que es lo más importante ser fiel y ser leal a, la, a, lo, que, a lo que uno piensa. I am aware that I had hoped to leave the last 15 minutes or so for questions. So I, we need to start wrapping it up. So it's sort of like a questions from the uh, audience, but as a last question for me, <laughs> I wanted to put to both of you, for all of those aspirational photographers in the audience and in the world, it's, it's a tough hustle to manage to get recognition, and if you have any advice to them who are starting out on their careers. ¿Quién es primero? Who is first? <laughs> um, bueno, yo. Um, Nelson, we'll say you're first. Okay. Oh, no, no. <laughs> yo tengo que decir muchísimas cosas porque so, soy un ejemplo de que, de, de que se puede. Uh, no importa la situación en donde estés, no importa um, tu género, no importa tu condición económica. Importa lo que tienes dentro, importa tus ganas de crecer, importa tus ganas de salir adelante. Y para estos chicos, esas nuevas generaciones, eh, quiero ser un ejemplo. Porque eh, desde, si ustedes pueden eh, entender un poco mi, mi historia, mi background, pues pueden ver que yo salí de la nada sabiendo, no, yo no sabía nada de fotografía, no sabía nada de técnica, eh, no sabía muchas cosas, y, pero mis ganas y mi pasión me orillaron a, a buscar información, a estudiar, a preguntar, a, a, a meterme a todos lados y, y aprender y a, y a entender de qué se trata, trataba esta carrera como fotógrafo. Y lo que les puedo recomendar es prepárense. 
prepárense, investiguen. Hay, por medio, en estos momentos de pandemia, en me, por medio de la web, ustedes pueden eh, escuchar a muchos fotógrafos alrededor del mundo y enfóquense muy bien en sus intereses, en, los, en lo que les llama la atención, en lo que les interesa, en lo que les apasiona. Tiene que ser algo que les nazca a ustedes. No pueden, ser, eh, no pueden abordar solo temas que sean atractivos para, para las personas que lo ven, para el espectador. Tienen que ser temas que primero lo muevan a uno mismo. Si ustedes, eh, hay algo que los mueve en la vida, eh, creo que van por muy buen camino. Y a partir de ahí, eh, no se dejen vencer eh, porque van a recibir muchas críticas eh, nos van a hacer pedazos en, en un principio porque así son los curadores, así son las revistas eh, y es normal. Y hay que aguantar, 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 aunque llores, aunque te quejes, aunque decidas que no es lo tuyo. Pero si tienes la pasión, la necesidad, para mí es una necesidad, entonces... Yo lo tengo que hacer, no, no puedo decir, bueno, pues creo que ya hice lo que tenía que hacer o ya no me gusta hacer esto. Es una necesidad para mí expresarme por medio de la fotografía y eso eh, les aconsejaría. Hagan, sigan sus instintos. Thank you very much. And, and Lauren, I'd like to add uh, from a different perspective, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not a... Uh, And, uh, I'm not an artist, I'm not a photographer, uh, you know, but uh, I, I do want to encourage people who, uh, you know, love art, they, uh, you know, uh, whether you're uh, looking and have the opportunity to, to purchase, I'd, I'd say do not be intimidated. And the other thing, do not be intimidated to get to know artists. Uh, You know, I've, uh, one of the great joys in life is, is getting to know people like Nelson. Uh, I, I, would, I would venture to say that most of the art that we have, uh, we, we know the artists, we, we reach out, we talk to them. I, I, I have, I, I've, I've seen exhibitions, uh, read books and I've, I, you know, come across, you know, artists I don't know or what. I've even reached out to people on Instagram, introduced myself and striked up a conversation. Uh, you know, they, I, you know, it's important for the, for the, for the artists, but it's also important to uh, your enjoyment of art. Uh, so I would, uh, I'd encourage everyone to not be, intimidated or bashful about uh, reaching out to artists, talk, going, going to your museum uh, and uh, talking to the docents. Uh, you know, uh, there's, a, it can really add a whole nother, another layer of the experience. Thank you. It sounds like it's also just good advice for life. Don't be a stranger to people. Ahora hay yeah. una Um, we do have a couple of questions from the audience, if um, y'all are able to take those. The first question we have is for Nelson. They ask, what inspired you to learn about photography and fight so hard to defend yourself in your work? Do you have a role model? Um, yo creo que lo que a mí me inspiró es mi historia de vida, mi historia de vida de de venir desde abajo y, y creo que mi, mi modelo a seguir creo que ha sido también mi madre porque ha sido una persona indígena que habla el idioma zapoteco, que no fue a la escuela y que a pesar de todo eh, sigue, trabaja y sigue trabajando, es una mujer mayor y es ella eh, como la persona que me ha dado la, la fuerza para yo seguir adelante y cuando ella ve mis ve que, que expongo, que viajo y que, y que hago este tipo de conversaciones, se siente ella muy orgullosa de mí. Thank you. 
And then our other question that we have so far is that you had mentioned that when you're in Charlotte and elsewhere, people would come up to you and say how you had impacted them. What's the most inspiring story you've heard from one of those people about how you've impacted them? Um, bueno, en, to en toda mi trayectoria he tenido como, como muchas reacciones de personas que les han impactado en su vida, mi historia fotográfica, mi historia de vida, pero en, cuando hice Creative Mornings en, en, en Charlotte, en, fue una, fue, bueno voy a decir acá una, una anécdota, en, fue, fue un día después del terremoto de mi pueblo, y entonces yo estaba muy, uh, muy asustado, muy nervioso porque no tenía comunicación con, con mi familia. No sabía si mi casa se había caído porque eso es lo que veíamos en las noticias. Entonces se acerca al terminar, me acuerdo um, que Allen y Armando me gritan, tu familia está bien. Entonces eso fue para mí algo un, de la emoción. Me puse a llorar, pero en ese momento se acercó una chica a mí se acercó también llorando y me dijo que, que, que me agradecía por, por esa charla porque su papá había, se había declarado como trans y que esa charla la había hecho cambiar para aceptar a su padre. Eso es, un, creo que con, con esa reacción, eh, creo que todo va a valer la pena que ella acepte a, a, a su padre, que ahora va a ser su segunda madre también, ¿no? porque va a cambiar de género. That's wonderful. Alan, I know you've done some meaningful work in terms of exhibition organization for promoting a lot of this work throughout Charlotte, North Carolina. Have you ever heard sort of any stories of impact um, from people who have gotten to see the exhibitions and things like that? Uh, yes, uh, but uh, I'll, I'll share a story in uh, it was in Los Angeles, uh, instead of Charlotte, but there was a uh, exhibition uh, that uh, I was involved with that was uh, from the Bank of America collection uh, at the National Museum of Mexican Art uh, called Miratus, Ancient Roots and Contemporary uh, Art. And uh, there's a, uh, there was a group of uh, of photographs in that show. And I was, well, I was in the gallery, uh, the museum gallery uh, walking, and then I was standing and looking at him, this, this, the, there were these two ladies there and uh, they were talking about the work and uh, being my, who I am, I introduced myself and, and, and joined in the conversation. And the lady, one of the ladies looked at me and she said, uh, you know, she was, had tears in her eyes and she, she said, it is so great to be able to see these images. It reminds me of my home, uh, my, my home village. And, you know, I think it goes back to what I said earlier about the ability of art uh, to tell stories and to connect with people. Uh, and that, that was just really, it made me feel really proud of, uh, of what, what, uh, what we did with the exhibition, uh, what the museum was doing, because here was a person that had such a, a strong and positive emotional reaction. And that was, it was just a small example. Thank you for that. I think we are nearing, or we have neared the end of our time. So I have not seen any more questions within the Q&A box. So I just want to thank you again for the time that you've devoted today. It's been really fascinating to talk to both of you. And I just wanted to see if you had any final words that you wanted to share before we headed on. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, I, I'll start by uh, thanking everyone, for, one, for joining the discussion, but 
uh, Lauren, uh, thanks to you and uh, Ackland Museum uh, for, uh, for showing the works and, uh, you know, uh, having the dialogue and, uh, you know, having conversations like this, uh, you know, I think it's very important and, uh, you know, uh, we're honored to be a, uh, a part of it. Uh, and it's always great to, uh, to spend some time with my friend Nelson. Uh, bueno, yo quiero agradecer la invitación de la universidad. Eh, quiero agradecer también a Allen por acompañarme en este, en este largo viaje. Su apoyo ha sido incondicional y ha sido una de las grandes cosas que yo valoro en la vida. Y, y también eh, eh, quiero decirle a las personas que, que, que es bueno escuchar este tipo de charlas también porque son muy inspiradores, son de gran valor y, y también los invito a, a visitar la exhibición en, en Ackland, Ackland Art Museum en, y, y también de alguna manera ahí está la, la página de internet, el Instagram y para que se tienen alguna duda, alguna um, opinión pueden hacer, hacérmela llegar a saber y con mucho gusto estaremos en contacto. Thank you so much, Nelson. It has been an honor and a privilege and a pleasure to get to know your work. And Alan, I thank you so much for making that happen. So we're all very happy that this is something we've been able to promote within the museum. Thank you again.